Hey guys, welcome back to another Warframe video. Today we are going to be looking at the Rapololist fight, which is one of the more challenging boss fights in Warframe, particularly for players who are just starting to clear out the star chart, and especially so for players looking to clear the Steel Path star chart, because in Steel Path, this fight can be a right pain. It is a bit of a hassle, there's lots of stuff going on during it, and for the most part it can be very buggy which a lot of people get very annoyed with. So today, I thought I would run through the build that I like to use for taking down the Rapolalist, farming up all of the Amalgam mods, and if you're not into Wisp Prime or you want Wisp to put through the Helminth, then you can also farm normal Wisp parts in this fight. So it's quite an important fight which you have to do. As laborious as it is, it is something that all players are going to have to encounter at some point. So without further ado, let's get into it. It is a sentient boss fight, an Eidolon if you will. And as an Eidolon hunter, I'm fairly familiar with, you know, how Eidolon mechanics work. But there are a few differences with the Rapolalist. But either way, we are going to be having to utilize our Operator and our Arcane. So first things first, you probably want to make sure that you have Madurai fairly maxed out in your focus tree. The particular abilities to pay attention to are going to be Void Strike and Power Transfer. You definitely want these two maxed out for this fight and Phoenix Talons maxed out as well if you can for the extra 30% damage. So that's very important. In terms of weaponry, you can see I am not running a primary or secondary here. And that is going to be very important when we actually come to the fight. And I'll explain why as we go. But essentially what's going to happen is the Rapolalist will spawn a specter of ourself and in order for it not to shoot us we're basically not going to equip any weapons and it doesn't matter anyway because we are only going to be using the dex pixia to do damage so if we take a look at our dex pixia it is on radiation eidolons count as machinery their armor is alloy so they take increased damage to radiation and the Rapolalist armor cannot be stripped. It can't be stripped by Uniru. It can't be stripped by Vastalok with Shattering Impact. So we are just going to have to deal with that. And yeah, that's why we are running full-on radiation here with Prime Heated Charge. You could probably sub this build out a bit more, but this is the general build that I use just for Titania gameplay on Steel Path Circuit. If you haven't seen my Duviri Max Out video, this is a derivation of that build. I will leave a link to that down in the comments below. But yeah, everything else geared towards fire rate, damage, and multi-shot. In terms of our Titania Prime, I have built her for fair tankiness, I would say, but also a decent amount of damage. You can see our strength here up at 240%. That is largely thanks to two of these Tower Forge Shards, which are giving us an extra 30%. But to be honest, they're not really all that relevant here, and you should be able to do this fight just as easily without them. So that's something to bear in mind as well. I've also got arcane deflection on which is going to stop us from taking slash procs as from doing this fight a fair few times i have found that slash is what is going to take us out most of the time so do bear that in mind as well arcane precision is also going to add to the amount of damage that our dex pixia can do as well so that's another nice tool you can put on but strictly speaking it's not overly necessary for this fight we are also running Razor Wing Blitz as we want to be doing it as quickly as possible and having this on is going to allow us to storm through the map to get to the fight much faster. Everything else here just geared towards survivability, efficiency so we can stay in our fourth ability for longer and I have also subsumed Eclipse onto my second which is going to increase our damage drastically. I would say this is actually a fairly important subsume for this build so get your hands on it if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all we want to talk about here. Let's take a quick look at our Operator. So on your Operator, if you do not have access to an amp adapter, I would highly recommend doing so because that is going to improve the fight time here pretty drastically. However, you know, if you don't, then out of these two arcanes here that we have, Eternal Eradicate and Eternal Onslaught, I would probably focus on getting Eternal Onslaught as that's going to guarantee crits from our amp every single time. So it's a pretty important one to have. The Operator Amps are not really that important at all. I'm barely going to be utilizing them. But if you do want some sustain, then Magus Elevate is going to be one that is useful. So yeah, something else to note as well. Oh, I should have mentioned the Amp as well. Hold on. So the amp is a 177. If we take a look at the parts, we are going to be utilizing the Replac Prism only, but we also have Certus Brace and Proper Scaffold on for the maximum crit potential of an amp. So yeah, this one is pretty good at taking down shields. That's why we're using it. 
The other tool that we are going to be utilizing is our on-call crewmate. Now, I'm not actually going to go and look at my on-call crewmate because it's fairly easy for me to just explain what he's going to be used for. Basically, you want him to have max endurance and health. And if you want to give him a weapon, I would recommend giving him a beam weapon such as the Kuvanu Core or the Tenet Cycron because that's, you know, capable of clearing out enemies. But the main thing is that he is going to survive and act as a distraction to some of the nonsense that's going to be going on around us, like when the Rapololist spawns in enemies and also does his missile attacks. They are going to be directed towards our uncle crewmate rather than us, which is going to, yeah, basically make our lives a lot easier. So that's the other thing that you need to bear in mind. But Rather than continue to talk about it, let's just hop in to a Steel Path Rapololis fight. I'm going to be commentating it as we go live, so do bear with me if I happen to stutter or slow down, because like I said, it will be a live recording as I'm doing it, so bear with me. Let's hop into it now, guys. Alright guys, so here we are. We're going to go into our fourth, and we're going to hold down one, so we get status immunity. And that is also going to give us a decent amount of speed. Now, I am just going to continually recast that every time it runs out. And I lose a bit of speed. So many friendship doors. And yeah, we are just going to completely blitz our way towards the Rapololist. There we are. Now, what I'm going to do as soon as we get into the fight here... I am going to come in and out of my operator in order to proc power transfer in our Madurai skill tree. That's going to improve my damage output loads on my amp. I am also going to utilize my power strike as well and then hopefully take down his shield in three or four shots. So in and out. Let's put down our uncle crewmate as well. Oh, let's come back into our operator. There we go. And now we're going to fly over to one of these beacons right here. Land. I'm going to use a uh, an energy pad here just to make sure my energy stays up fairly high. And then as soon as he's done firing, we're going to go up, jump onto him, and fly our way into these charged beacons. Now, as soon as we come back to the center platform, I'm going to spam jump to get airborne. That way I'm going to take less damage. And then I'm going to hit my Eclipse, go for a headshot, and then we should be able to pretty quickly take one of these out. There we go. Hit the center console. And then I'm just going to go airborne again and come into Operator and repeat the process. There we go. So yeah, we're going to do the same thing again, exactly the same. Back to the center platform, spam jump to get into the air. Hit our eclipse. Once again, take out the shield. Last beacon now. Gonna make sure that my energy stays up. I'll use another energy pad. I probably didn't have to here, but it's not worth the risk. So this last stage of the fight where we actually have to tank his HP bar, I am just gonna wait slightly in order for me to get my void strike back. But I'm not gonna be using my operator, I'm just gonna be using it on my frame. So let's jump up. Just wait a bit. There it is. Oh, make sure your Eclipse is active. That's important. There we go. And he's down for the count. So that was 3 minutes 40 there. We do have to get out still, but fortunately as Titania, we can fly to the extraction point early. Now 
like so. And there we go, guys. So that's a very, very, very quick Rapolalist fight. Not much hanging around at all. Pretty much four minutes dead. So that's a pretty good run for us. And we managed to get ourselves uh, Amalgam Argonac Metal Auger and also Wisp Prime Your Optics. So there we go. Let's uh, do a quick recap. Okay, guys. So our Titania proving to be an absolute monster in this fight on Steel Path as well. You know, a Rapolalist fight in four minutes on Steel Path is nothing to be sad about. So yeah, hopefully you guys can draw from this and speed up your farming for Wisp and for your Amalgam mods. And yeah, let me get let me know obviously if you guys have any tactics that you like to use for this mission or did use for this mission. I certainly don't plan on coming back to it now that I have all the Amalgam mods. It's definitely not a fight that I enjoy. <laughs> but yeah, there is one thing that I did forget to mention during that little fight there. And that is why we weren't running primary and secondary. I think I kind of touched upon it. But essentially, the Apollolist will spawn a spectre of yourself. And by not equipping any primary or secondary weapon, it loses the ability to shoot you. Uh, so your spectre can't shoot you and do insane damage and just kill you instantly. So that's something important to note as well. But yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions, anything like that, leave those down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. I'll see you later, guys.